In this episode of the Beamable Game Dev Podcast, I sit down with Aaron and we talk about our gamer's gift guide for this holiday. Let's jump into it. Aaron, what is happening? We are talking Beamable Gift Guide, our top 10 picks for 2021. You put this post together. You had people from within the company say, yo, here's some pretty rad gifts. And so I have the, uh, I have the, the article right here in front of me. Number, do we want to start from the bottom and go up? Are these in any particular order? No, so they're there. We got a more responses than 10, um, but some of them were like, Oh, a new gaming mouse, and I was like, But what, what gaming mouse, you know? So I didn't really have a, a thing for it. So, no, got these it. are just kind of in randomized order. Yeah. Number 10 is my favorite, so let's leave the best for last. Oh, my goodness, you're you're killing me. You're killing me here. Okay. Well, number one, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, the triumphant, turbulent stories behind how video games are made. Have, have you read this? No. Okay. Well, neither have I, but I've listened to it on Audible. And so I highly suggest this one, honestly. If you're in really? game development or thinking about getting into game development, this is kind of some behind the scenes of like, you're going to learn about games like Destiny and Stardew Valley and Uncharted and many, many more. There's some crazy stories in this in this uh, in this book. So that's, it's really, really good. Yeah, that's awesome. I I love Stardew. Um, and I, I mean, I love Animal Crossing a little bit more just because I grew up with Animal Crossing. But I've been trying to get more into Stardew because it's such a good game and has such like great story. So I think I'm going to probably pick up that book now and kind of read it because Stardew's in it. So that that seems pretty cool. Y you will hear stories about how like he would get so like burned out on making it that his girlfriend would leave who was supporting him. And as soon as she would leave, he would switch over to Final Fantasy and then play for eight hours. And then she'd come home and he'd switch back over and look like he was coding again. What? Because he was just burning out. But. Oh, my God. You know. But, I mean, it's a super important topic to talk about. Like, but like I think it's a, it's a buzzword now, like on Twitter. Like, oh, burnout, creator burnout. But it's like, it's real. It's like, it's so real. For, for anybody and whatever creative process they're doing, you know, like even, you know, you and me being, you know, you're a content creator on your own. And then also with Beamable, it's very easy to get burnt out trying to multitask that. And I can't even imagine like having to code a game and then also like do your laundry. Yeah. He, I mean, he did everything. He did everything himself. Yeah. Like he was, it, it has since changed. There's more of a, there's more of a, a, well, I don't even know how much of a team there is at this point, but yeah, I, I know when it came to getting the online and stuff like that was that was contracted out because yeah, Cause, I mean much. it's gotten it's gotten too bigger much. too. Like it's it's becoming more known. Like I kind of I, I don't know for me, kind of on like a tier list, I kind of equate it to like Harvest Moon. You know what I mean? Since they're both kind of like farming sims, um, but it's definitely jumped up in popularity. So. Number two on the list here is a gaming chair that you could pick up for a mere $1,645. Yeah, chump is... change. <laughs> what is this? It, 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 is it Arion? Is that how you say I, it? I don't even know. Yeah, so like, I had I had to include this because the person who submitted this into our, our Google form of, you know, gift ideas said – they made a really good point. They were like – if you are creating games or if you are creating content in any way, you're sitting down for a majority of the day. Now, you and me, I mean, we both have have gaming chairs behind us and mine costs around $150 to $200. And they made the point, would you rather spend $150 to $200 on a chair that's going to break once every like five years? Or would you rather, you know, spend the money? get the good chair and have it last you for much longer and be better for you in the long run. Like health wise, like there's, there's so many different like um, health benefits from sitting in this Aeron or Arion chair. It's like insane. Interesting. So, yeah. yeah. I thought I've, it was pretty I've cool. I've seen, I've seen these on Twitter, the Herman, you know, they're from the Herman Miller. Yeah. They're uh, yeah. 
like the problem is they just don't look like an like a like a cool gamer chair. They look yeah. that you know like <laughs> Like it well, doesn't say DX Racer on there, and I can well, see through the back. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, it isn't like like my chair looks cool, but you know, I don't know. It's kind of uh, think think of it like band aids. Like like if you have like a pretty looking band aid, it's probably like cheap and gonna fall apart. You know what I'm saying? But if you have like that like ugly looking brown thing that you put, it's gonna like it's gonna heal that. You know what I mean? So like. <laughs> kind of same thing with the chair like okay mine's pretty and everything but you know maybe it's not built as best as that chair even though that chair looks not cool that i don't i mean it looks it it doesn't look terrible it looks no. very very modern very you know? very office chair very and it, it, i mean Dunder it's Mifflin. probably super comfortable so yeah you know 1645 dollars Merry Christmas. It's, it's like uh have you seen the, the love sack? It's a no. bean bag, but it's like huge and it's okay. like sixteen hundred dollars. Oh wow. For a bean bag. Another good gift for a gamer, you know. Yeah, if they're definitely if they're just chilling out in front of the TV and they want a giant bean bag to sit in. There you go. Uh number three on our list here is uh Makey Makey. And with this device, you can turn fruit into controllers yeah i mean it doesn't even just have to be fruit like it can be anything like you can um like draw it to like a piece of paper and just have like little circles and then if you touch the circle it'll like work isn't that cool interesting this yeah the the picture literally has like five bananas a kiwi and an orange mm -hmm. and it's plugged in each each has these uh like cables coming off of them, going into a to a device that's then hooked up USB to a computer, and they're controlling like a keyboard or like yeah. piano keyboard on screen. So imagine very, like very interesting. Imagine like using mushrooms to like play Super Smash Brothers. I just don't know if I want to imagine that. Why? It'd be cool. <laughs> you think about it. There like, would be you, pieces of mushroom everywhere. You. Nah, like you jump on a Goomba, but with a mushroom. Okay, well, like maybe some Super Mario, but Smash is too oh, yeah. intense. Smash is, like, Smash is too intense. But I guess, intense. yeah, like Super Mario Bros. Imagine like jumping on a Goomba and using a mushroom to jump on a Goomba. It'd be pretty I cool. I mean, there's things I've never imagined before, but now I have. So there you I go. Wonder, I wonder if it works on like eggs. How are you going to clip it to an egg? Like cooked eggs? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or like, like a like a hard, a hard egg. boiled egg. You just like, bloop, and then you can like squish it. You know. <laughs> I'm just I thinking because like Yoshi and like egg and yeah, you know. Okay, all right. Uh, Pico Eight looks yeah. like it's a, uh, a downloadable fantasy console. Allows you to create small games in an eight bit style. So. Kind of cool. Get to create your own games with the Pico 8. Yeah. Uh, number five is an interesting, interesting one. And it is just a rubber duck. What can we go into detail here a little bit? Listen, it's extremely important, okay, to have the rubber duck on the list. Okay. It has magical that's, properties, okay? That's it. Okay. For only two dollars on Amazon. No, it was so the person who recommended this, apparently it's like an inside joke in like the community of like coding and creating games um that like when you're stuck on a certain issue they call it like rubber ducking or something um mm. but it's like the duck always knows the answer so like if you're like ah oh, i don't know what to do and then you like look on your desk the duck will tell you what to do so great little stocking stuffer for two dollars and 24 cents at uh you can even dress them up too oh huh? yeah have you little seen those things hats. on tiktok where they have like the little spinny hats and they got like the chains and they got like the glasses. Uh, I'm not on that side of tick. I'm not on the rubber duck side of TikTok, apparently. It's a, it's a, it's a good side of TikTok. It's a good side of TikTok. Okay. It's a good side of TikTok. All right. Uh, Camtasia says, mm -hmm. already have a fantastic game. Looking to show off gameplay or make an epic trailer? Camtasia. Although on the pricier end of our list, allows creators to easily create content to promote their games. So there you go. I go. mean, it's about what? About 
three it's like two hundred or three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The next one is interesting. It's kind of like it's like a wind up Game Boy called Playdate. You don't actually have to wind it up, but one of the controllers is a a crank. A crank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. what's really cool about this is it's currently on pre-order. Um, but from my understanding from their website is you can use this to actually create games. And then they have like this like play date community where you can play other games that people have made on this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty compact, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of like cool. um, it reminds me of like the Game Boy Color. But even smaller, like it's like, yeah. It's like a, it's like the Game Boy Advance SP, but without the clamshell. Like it's just, it looks pretty similar in size. So yeah, kind of cool. Next up, you have the Elgato Stream Deck. And what's interesting about the Stream Deck is you can create macros. So I know of artists who like have to do Twitch emotes, and that process is draw the emote, then save it in three different sizes that you upload to Twitch. Okay. But you can set up macros to hit one button on your stream deck and it will automatically do those three saves and resize everything with the press of one button. You just have to set it up. That's cool. Yeah, 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 I don't, I don't know too much about the stream deck because like I don't, I don't have it. I know you have it, and uh, someone else in our company also has it. And um, yeah, the person in this was like, "Oh, this person at Beamable has this, and it's so cool. You gotta get it." So I was like, "Definitely have to put this on the list." Yeah, but this. Do you, do you have that size? Like, do you have the big one? No, they, uh, that wasn't around when I when I picked mine up. That would be okay. that that may be a future purchase for me because I use my stream deck all the time. Like uh, if I'm streaming Smash Bros, mm -hmm. I always use a list and I just have different things that like uh, exclamation point next lets the person know that they're up next. Well, I just have that program to my stream deck so I don't have to type it. I can just hit it and it Bloop. puts it in my chat. Wow. Um, I can open the list, close the list. When I'm when I go to record a video, I have it set up. It's called a multi action. And what it does is I hit the button. OBS goes to a black screen, then record, then hits the record button, then plays my intro, then transitions to the scene that I'm going to be using and I can start recording the video. And a lot of times I'll do it in one take and then I can hit the button one more time. It'll go to the black screen or an outro if I want and then and then end that's, the recording. That's that's magic right there. That it is saves it saves you a lot of time when you're yeah. uh you know when you're having to uh uh do a lot stream. of editing and stuff. So yeah. or then yeah, and even stream stream transitions where it's like I'll have like a Mario Kart fly across the screen and then transition to a different scene. Or you know, that's there's just different so there's cool. different things, different things you can set up that way. Even when I would start my stream, I would just hit one button it would start the stream and then play my starting slide. And then that would just run on repeat. And then I could just come in and hit, hit the next button. So, and it, it didn't have this kind of stuff uh, when I first back, got into it. So back, in the, back in the yeah. olden days. Yeah. When back in the I old days of the went to day. the saloon to gather my likes and followers. Wow. Yeah. And, I, <laughs> and I shared a nice warm, hot cocoa. There you go. There you go. Number nine, <clears throat> pardon me, is the uh, Swiss Gear laptop backpack. Pretty fancy. Pretty important, too. Yeah. Ex extremely, extremely important. Um, Just any laptop backpack is extremely important for gamers, game makers, creators. Now, me, like, I don't have the, the, the Swiss Gear one, the one that's on the list, but because I have an Alienware computer i have the whoop. the oh, oh where is it i have waiting yeah. in anticipation oh yeah please wait please wait waiting, one moment waiting in anticipation. in anticipation for this she's leaving she just left i'm here she's, i'm here she came back okay this this thing i can't even tell you how many times this has saved my computer because i am super clumsy i mean extremely clumsy and it also has back support too, 
sorry, we're, we're, we're talking about the Alienware now than we are the Swiss gear, but the Swiss gear has the same thing with like lumbar support because, you know, when you have a big computer, it's heavy and it hurts. So you need to protect yourself and your computer. <laughs> you know, I mean, seriously. Like, yeah, 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 absolutely. I've got, absolutely. I've got cases for everything. I got a big bulky case for my PS4 too. Um, but yeah, Swiss gear, definitely get that because it's got some great reviews and can hold, I'm pretty, pretty sure it holds up to like, I don't know. I think it was like a 17, S 17 laptops. No, not 17. Like a seven, <laughs> <laughs> like my laptop screen is 17 inches. So I think it holds up to like that. Uh, neat. You know? Cool. All right. Well, Hey, that's going to do it for our, uh, no, for <laughs> no, no. Don't think you can pull that on me, Mr. Mister. You're missing one. You're missing my fave one on the list. Okay, well, I didn't know this was going to be on the list. I didn't yeah. uh, this it was, it was I did made. not submit anything to no. the yeah. to, to the To clarify, this is this is my submission into the 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 gift guide. As a matter of fact, I have it right here. Oh, here we go. Here we go. If you're only listening, you can't right. see her holding up a paperback book of right now. Another Casual by Josh Schmidt. That's I recommend me. this for stocking stuffers, for audible ear stuffers. Um, get this book. Why? Because it's really good. The end. I'm <laughs> kidding. Not the, not end. the end. No, but seriously, like this, like... I think I've read this book twice now and listened to it twice on Audible. Um, just because every time I listen to it or every time I read through it, I just uh, am more enlightened by your wisdom and life experience in this industry. And I think it's really important to show this side um, of, you know, things like burnout, like we were talking about earlier, and um, things like, you know, struggling to figure out exactly where you want to be in the industry, but you know you want to be a part of it somehow. The uh, the the main focus of the book is just to enjoy the journey. Yeah, right? that's the main that's the main focus. Enjoy the journey because we can get so focused on our goals sometimes that we miss we miss the ride, and then when we don't hit the goals, it can bum us out. So if we just enjoy the journey, realize we're leveling up all the time. That's the yeah. even like kind of like small wins, premise. you know, exactly like, yeah, exactly. you know, it's uh, yeah, it's it is super important to enjoy the journey because, you know, games are things that people have grown up with. And when they start to get ruined, it's like not good. You know what I mean? Like, like if you're I don't know, I've just recently got into this whole streaming content creating thing with your guidance. And um, for a little bit, I was like trying to push myself to make videos but as a student in school right now, it's really hard to do that. And then I like was like, oh, I felt bad about playing video games and not creating content for it. And it's just like, you know, that's why I was like, okay, I'm just going to read Josh's book again. Because <laughs> this is not the mindset I need to be in to do this. So, there you yeah. go. There you go. Well, hey, thanks for putting this list together for us. Wait. Thanks for jumping on the show. Wait. Oh, you've got more? Wait. Yeah, what what would you recommend? If you actually listened to my message and filled out my Google form for this article, thanks, Josh, what would you recommend? So, I mean, we're just talking about gifts for, like, gamers? Gifts for gamers, gifts for game makers, um, you know, because okay. we fight for the game maker, gifts I for mean, creators. Sometimes you got to take a break, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's even good to not look at a screen. So I would recommend... I would recommend uh, either the the NES Lego set or the new question mark block Lego set that uh, that Nintendo and Lego have collaborated or some Star Wars Legos, you know, something like something like that where you can like it's more not tactile. Have to look at, you don't have to look at a screen. Yeah. Right? It's not, yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe something like that or maybe maybe like charter a little fishing excursion or something like that just a just give fishing? yourself a break i don't just something that gets you're you like get... yeah you know how you play video games how about you go fishing <laughs> how about how about you see that ice lake up there yeah just dig a hole and plop a line in there and just you grab got it a fish you got it and, and maybe think about think about the rubber ducky encoding <laughs> maybe some hiking boots or something 
you know, like yeah. in a warm jacket so you yeah. can get outside and, and and breathe some fresh air. And <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, Aaron, thanks again for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks for hosting, Josh. Uh, all right. We will a... uh, we will see you. See you in the next one. Yep. <laughs> Bye now. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Beamable Game Dev Podcast. If you are a game dev and you would like to be a part of this show, hit me up, josh at beamable.com. Also, if you'd like to chat with other game devs, head on over to beamable.com slash discord. And if you'd like to try Beamable for free, just head over to beamable.com.